Imagine this, the year is 2036, AI took over and AI put 90% of programmers and software engineers out of their job. It's literally brutal and ugly. Now they're selling ice cream out of the hovercraft they bought with their last page. Now let's go back to reality. What does it mean to become a future-proof programmer? To answer the question, I want to walk you through an analogy that explains this better than I could ever do it. So let's say you want to build a skyscraper and to build it, you need architects and you need builders. The architects plan and orchestrate the bigger picture while the builders shove the mud and pour concrete and weep the sweat from their brows. And until now, programmers were both the architects and the builders. They were developing the infrastructure and planning the bigger picture of an application while also doing the nitty gritty of writing the code. My subjective prediction is that AI is gonna do the job for builders and so what will be left to do is the job of the architect. Given that this is the future, there's gonna be only two types of developers. On one hand, there will be the clingy developers who salivate and drool like a hungry dog over how great it was back in the day and how unfair the world is right now. And these people are honestly delusional. They ignore the future by sticking their head in the sand like an ostrich and guess what? They are the same people that have been commenting that coding is dead for the past 5-10 years. Those guys are destined to fail because they are closing their eyes to what is possible and the opportunities that will come their way. On the other hand, we have the forward thinkers that want to learn how to exploit this new future of work and obsess over taking every piece of the market share. They don't put themselves in a box like, I'm a React developer, or I'm a this language developer, or I only do this kind of thing. They are the people that will thrive regardless of future events and technology improvements. So how to become one of them? I want to introduce you to a new paradigm shift. One of the greatest men to ever live was Leonardo da Vinci. And what made him great was the ability to navigate multiple disciplines from medicine to graphic design to painting and biology. You could say he was the first iteration of AI. He was a multifaceted man who lived in the Renaissance era when humanity started rising from the Dark Ages. Right now, Everything is new. All our beliefs and old ways of doing things are literally shifting out of proportion. That made me think one day, what if we are living through another Renaissance era? Think about the rate of tech development in the 1900s compared with today. 100 years of progress can actually happen in 10, like it happened from 2010 to 2024. Think internet growth, smartphones, biology manipulation, and now AI tech. And if we do live, in fact, in a Renaissance era, how can you be on the forefront of these monumental shifts that are happening within the fabric of our society? And that's when everything clicked, and I came up with a new term product architect. Similarly to Da Vinci, who studied the science of art and the art of science, product architects don't label and box themselves in any way, shape or form. They actually have three traits in common. And this is the first video of a four part series where I'm going to dive deep into each one of these traits of a product architect so that at the end of the series, you'll know how to become one of them. The first trait of every product architect is that he can take an idea and ship it into a real world product from to back and to end. So a, product architect, so a product architect operates across multiple disciplines like design, coding, DevOps, analytics, and much more, and orchestrates and watches over the entire development of a product. This can actually be done today with a few simple frameworks that I will teach you in the second video of this series, but it's very hard to do right now. And as more problems are solved, more problems arise. So the fact that we can solve problems faster doesn't mean we are running out of problems. In fact, we are creating even more high level problems because the world is a messy place. So my take is that far more companies will emerge in the future due to the fact that it's easier to release products and current companies will try to compete to gain more market share or to at least keep what they already got. There is no flat line in this world, so you either grow or you slowly die. And this leads me to the next trait. The product architect actually mastered using AI to their advantage. So imagine me coming to your job and let's say you are a barista and I start giving you instructions on how to froth your milk, grind and weigh your beans. I start giving you advice on how 
hot the water should be before extracting the espresso. You'll actually think I'm insane and you'll probably boot me ASAP. Why? Because I have no authority over you. I have zero competency in the fundamentals of coffee making. Now replace coffee with software. So the future product architect will organize and oversee the development of product through the entirety of its life cycle. So the AI will be the builder and the developer will be the architect. No more sweat, only hard problems to solve. But before you can do that, you need to know the big picture and understand the why behind the how. You need a good foundation in software development and for that you have to dig a big hole. This will actually be the subject of the third video from our series. And the third and last trait of the new era dev is that they are irreplaceable because of their ability to communicate with other people. Unless we all get a chip implanted in our neural cortex and we get hooked up to the metaverse, knowing how to communicate and how to persuade people inside your company will be a mandatory skill to have. Think about it, you can be the best coder right now, know the ins and outs of everything, but still lose the job in front of someone that knows how to befriend the interviewers and the managers. And you'll be getting promotion over promotion because you'll know how to communicate effectively with the management and the stakeholders. I personally wasn't the best developer, far from it, but my ability to communicate got me jobs over engineers that were way more qualified than me. A lot of people are worried about AI singularity and that's fair enough, but if that happens, getting jobs will be the last of our problems at that moment in time. And if you look at the past, we can see how the quality of our life improved exponentially anyway. So I believe this trend will continue, but everything will change. If you adapt and keep learning and don't keep your head in the sand like an ostrich, avoid talking about it like they were avoiding talking about Voldemort in Hogwarts, then you will be good. So get ready because in the next few weeks, I will release one episode for each of these traits and we will go deep down into the rabbit hole, deeper than any other video you'll find on YouTube so that you can truly become a product architect and set you apart for a future of prosperity and freedom in this new crazy era that we are living. So make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next videos so I can cover every single thing that you are probably worried about or curious about. See you in the next one. Peace out.